Hello, Songbirds. Welcome to today's live stream. My name is Kerry Ho. I'm from the songbirdtree.com. And today is episode 19, Vocal Health and Recovery with voice physiotherapist Andrew Pilcher. This is, you're just in for such a treat, guys. Um, I'm so happy that you're here. And I'm sorry that we had to delay it for one week. I was sick last week, but we are here now. Um, and you are just going to hear from um, Andrew. And he's just got so much experience working specifically with singers um, and rehabilitating their voices, putting them on a path to vocal health, um, and you're just going to love it, okay? So now before I get Andrew on the show, I just want to say a quick hello um, to those of you who are here. Hey, Kathleen, so good to see you. Hey, Virgie. Yeah, I missed you guys all last week as well. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's pretty early in the Philippines right now, so thank you. Hey, Waverlyn, good to see you. Abimbola, you're ready for this. Well, I'm telling you, we are ready for this too. Jesse, 2 a.m. in the Netherlands. Oh, my golly. Thank you so, so much for joining us. I, we really don't take it lightly, you know, that you guys actually um, do this. Now, I just want to quickly let you know before I invite our amazing special guest that my How to Sing and Mix Voice full program is coming soon, right? Now, if you are excited about a program like that because you've always wanted to learn how to sing in your mixed voice, to sing in a voice that doesn't crack, flip or strain, you got to get on to the link below, click on that and then sign up to my email list and you'll be the first to know. You'll also be the first to get access to, well, the only ones to get access to exclusive discounts and free bonuses when when that program comes out. So make sure you go and do that. Just the, the link is in the description box after the show. All right, guys, the moment you've been waiting for. All right. So I just want to um, tell you a little bit about my special guest before I actually, um, you know, invite him on. It's it's kind of like building up the mystery, you know. So his name is Andrew Pilcher and he's a very, very experienced physiotherapist who actually has a lot of experience working with artists. So dancers, singers, um, acrobats, musicians, it's been amazing, right? Um his credentials can seriously just be like seriously a big scroll and we'd be just scrolling down forever. But I chose my top three. <laughs> okay. So that was the first one. The second thing is he spent seven years in London working with performers on the West End in 30 West End productions and also on BBC television performing shows as well. How cool is that? Like you'd never think there'd be a physiotherapist behind the scenes um, in, in a West End production or on a or performing arts television show. But of course they would be, right? So Andrew's been doing that uh, for seven years in London, which is we're going to dive into that a little bit later. And he's a very highly experienced, specifically voice physio, currently lectures at the University of Melbourne at the Victorian College of the Arts. So without any further ado, guys, I'm going to welcome my special guest and I want you to give him the warmest, loudest, just most enthusiastic welcome. All right, here we go. Andrew, hey, how are you today? Hey, y'all. <laughs> so, so good, good to have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so exciting. I know you've got nuggets of gold to share. But, you know, Andrew, before we get into the juicy stuff of vocal health and yeah. um, vocal recovery, can yeah. you explain to us what is a voice physio? <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, physiotherapist that treats the voice. So um, we'll go into a lot of detail about how the voice is affected through the body, and that's my life's work and what I love to do. Um, but it's principally just treating the muscles around the throat um, and reducing tension so that we can normalise the laryngeal movement um, and the ease of the larynx moving well. I love it already. I just cannot <laughs> wait, Andrew. Can you give us a little bit of a snapshot of just what does it actually look like to work with singers on a daily basis as a voice physio? Yeah, well, singers on a daily basis, um, uh, well, we, our practice here in Melbourne and both in London where I was working there, um, it was uh, very busy practices. We built up a reputation knowing we treat the voice. So we treat both singers but also just teachers and lawyers and other sort of voice users that, uh, that get problems in the throat. Um, so there will be lots of just treating the voice. What the wonderful thing is that it, it responds quickly. So it's kind of one session and then you're a lot, lot better um, because it's mostly muscle tension that's affected. So it's not the five sessions of physio, you get your back a bit better and then you're sort of 
almost 80% there. It's a quick change, but um, uh, the, so the, the, the process is that we treat and it's a quick change, but it's all the other things with singers. Singers have a, a wide variety of issues. So stress is usually involved in our lives as singers, um, performers, yeah. because it's a, it's a stressful job. It's, we, we carry our heart on our sleeve, but it's something I see a lot that any problems with the throat, um, it quickly becomes like more than just, oh, I'm a bit bothered about this. It kind of goes a lot deeper. Um, yeah. And the throat, that word, there's this um, meaning back in the Hebrew to this word petach, and it sort of means your soul. So there's right. this connection to your throat and problems with your throat when it really affects you. Um, and so I see wow. a little bit of that. I'm, I'm not a soul therapist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I like to think I am. But, no, but, it's, but it's, it's just so interrelated. So I see that. I see people's issues in their life all interrelating so yeah. diversely. Um, and that's also part of the voice getting better. That's amazing. And you know what? I, I would totally um, relate to that as a singing teacher myself, you know, and a vocal coach. Um, yeah. There's just, you know, singing, it's us. It's our whole selves, our mind, body, and soul, and it's yeah. all intertwined. So very interesting that you brought that up, Andrew, and I can't wait to get delve into that a bit more. But before yeah. we get onto the technical stuff, can I ask you, tell yeah. us a little bit about what it was like in the seven years where you were in London working on 30 West End productions with, yeah. with artists. What was that like? London was awesome. So London's a very busy place, you know, like I said, 30 productions, but that, there's so many more. Um, every evening in London, there's 30 to 40, it's probably close to 40 working theatres. Um, obviously, right now, you know, we're out of control. COVID has, you know, said everything, but that's normally what it is. So working theatres-wise, that's a lot, you know, um, and your know, Broadway is much the same. The arts, busy arts, and pubs, there's a lot of productions. And then there's other fringe-type productions as well. But the scene over there, the fringe scene, um, it doesn't really lend to the amateur sort of um, sort of performer. Uh, there's all the professionals who aren't getting their regular work who are in that fringe scene. So the fringe scene is ecstatically wonderful and it's, it's so vibrant um, and that's where they're working and sometimes for free. Um, so, so it's a very busy scene over there. It's um, yeah. uh, very bustling. Um, often we'll see people over there and treat their throat or their their um, problems in their body um, uh, just to get them through their production and they're under such stress to get that going. We work wow. with the production managers and so there's a very sort of little community that is set up to really know each other well, work off each other just to get the results happening, get the people on the stage as best as we can, as long as we can and avoid big yes. injuries and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's, so it's like good. Pretty cutthroat over there, um, you yeah. know, and so the stresses of that are, are definitely real um, and it really takes the driven artist to make it there and that goes for their bodies who they've got to get connected yeah. to how the body works well and they, yeah. like no one else, are perfect but they they, they, they have to go through that journey, you know. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just such a taxing job, isn't it, being an artist? Whether you're a dancer, a singer, a muso, it, it's quite taxing. Yeah both physically and also mentally. So it's so yeah. good that there are people like yourself who really just come in there and fill in the gap, you know, for, for that sort of um, thing. Yeah. I can imagine that, you know, if you're doing eight shows a week, mm. yeah. <laughs> you know, like we re you, you'd really need that sort of support. Um, so it's really wonderful work that you do, Andrew, and I can see that you're super, super passionate about it, which is why I invited you on, on yeah. here. Um, and um, I'd really love for you to get into some of the juicy, you know, technical details of, you know, yeah. some tips that you can share actually with our singers um, that are here today um, yeah. you know, as it pertains to the body and how the body affects the voice. So yeah. can you give us a little bit of a rundown on that, Andrew? Ooh, totally, totally. So I've got practical things for you all. Um, so we're going to get into it all. So we've got four main areas that I sort of see every day that really affect the voice um, quite strongly. Um, and I'm going to give you little tips on each little area to kind of try out now and we'll sort of have a little practical sort of demo type thing, okay? So, oh, it sounds amazing. All right. Well, I'm just going to leave it to you, Andrew, okay? I'm going to disappear for a bit because I can't wait to learn, right? <laughs> Take it away. Sorry, Andrew, um, but we can't really hear you anymore after that. Um, 
I'm just going to check to see whether anyone else can hear. Can everyone else hear, Andrew? I'll just take myself away I'm again. Gonna, I'm going to try again. So I'm going to say, if you can leave private messages, that's totally cool. I can see my um, camera is... It's working now. It's working now. It's all good. good. It's all good. Yep, yep. Sorry, Andrew. Can you just start again? <laughs> Whatever you were saying. Really, I was just really saying put private messages up um, and Kerry can probably mediate that um, uh, as to sort of ask me or interject and ask things. We'll bank it up and we can ask at the end. However it works, it's good for me. So four main areas that affect the voice in your body. And you're thinking, wow, this is kind of a bit off centre. How does this really affect? This is my voice. This is my throat. But as we said, it's so interconnected. So first of all, a big area that affects the throat, of course, are these muscles. So problems and tension through that the front of the throat area um, usually affect the voice. And the principal issue of the voice and why... Sorry, Andrew, I'm just going to have to interrupt you again. Your audio is sort of fluctuating. Do you mind just to maybe come a bit closer to wherever your microphone is? I'm just myself up a little bit. Cool. Um, let's have a go That's with much that. better. Yeah, that yeah that's much bit. better. Sorry, Kerry. Thank you. Okay, so um, uh, interject with questions if you didn't hear me and Kerry can bank them up and we can go through them, not a problem. Um, so four main areas and we'll start again is that the throat area is a big principal area that gets can get problems. Um, and muscle tension here really affects the laryngeal movement and the ease of that moving well. Um, so uh, the muscles around the throat through that front area of the throat and they're above the larynx itself. So that involves the tongue root. There's heaps of muscles that are uh, affecting that. Um, they work when you swallow. They, they control the movement of the larynx and the larynx moves up and down as you're ascending and descending in pitch, as you make different voice and tonal qualities um, and all sorts of those, um, those differences. Um, uh, that you make in your voice and the, the ease you will need to have in your voice. Um, so muscle tension building up here can provide a problem. Um, so way, main way I see is that the muscle tension around the throat, if it increases a lot, the larynx itself will raise up a little bit. Now, everyone, if you can just get your hands, we're going to get like stacking potatoes. Am I in the camera? I am. Thank you, Andrew. Good. So we've got hand on hand, like mashed potatoes, you know, the, the song. Um, anyway, good. So top hand has got a tilt and we're going to tilt now. Let me just get back in the camera. Woo! So we're tilting that top hand backwards. Hopefully that's, you can see it's coming back towards me. Um, and so that's the movement of the larynx that tends to happen. That hand is your larynx or the thyroid cartilage and the bottom hand is the cricoid cartilage, which is quite small. It's more like a finger. Anyway, so that's the movement that happens when we're raising the larynx up a little bit. Uh, there's a bit of lift and there's definitely the tilt back and up. Um, and so if there's muscles that are getting too tight around here, they'll hold the larynx itself ooh, let's go back, um, up and tilted back a little. Um, and it's still got room to move. It still moves quite a far away. But if it's holding a little high and it's in that slightly wrong position, um, the vocal folds themselves are shorter slightly and they'll affect the way that will resonate and make tone qualities and all that sort of thing. Um, and uh, it gets tighter quicker. Um, and there's other issues. You don't often get the same sort of closure and the same sort of control, but it's very uh, individual how it affects things. So you can basically start to get more tension build up. It gets tighter quicker and then you basically get more tension building up around the throat. Then that tension creates the larynx to be tighter and held a bit more, uh, and then the whole kind of cycle of tension build-up can start. So there's this cycle of tension that builds up, and every area I'll talk about um, in the body that affects the throat, um, really they lead into this excess tension and the larynx being held tighter than it should be and some protective tension build-up. Um, so muscles around here. So practically, let's do something fun. Okay, so I'm going to get my lovely hair out of the way. This is no haircut COVID. Awesome. Um, so, so I'm going to get your fingers held second thing, index finger to thumb, and I want you to basically get, so let's go into your neck. So if you can feel your side of your throat, and I want you just to turn your head side to side. So we're just getting that. And if you can see on me, I'm getting this little standout little muscle here. So I'm going to follow that up towards my ear um, and basically get over through there. You can see that standing out nicely, a bit red um, because it's sort of uh, been touching it, a bit of blood flow. It's good. Um, so we're going to grab it with that little pincer grip. 
you're going to squeeze it and move it slightly outwards towards the side. Um, if you go too far inwards, it's getting closer up towards that carotid area. It's just not that comfortable. Um, so we're going to do that. If you've got lots of pain here, be gentle with yourself. And if there's any, you know, don't force yourself to get dizzy. Okay, let's just do that over the internet. Good. So we're turning, <laughs> grabbing that with that little hold through there. You can see my fingers there. And you're just getting a little bit of a squeeze. So you're just trying to squeeze that sort of thumb to finger and then start to now do a little bit of kneading, a little bit of squeezing and releasing out through there. And so what you're doing is massaging it really. So you're trying to get some pressure um, between finger and thumb um, and you're just rolling around and you can feel that your hands are near your throat and you're often like, oh, what am I doing? Um, but that area is very pliable. Uh, if I was to keep doing that, by the way, while I'm talking, but, but just if I'm to move my larynx side to side, I can still talk, I can still swallow, and I can still move that larynx easily about an inch side to side. So it's easy to move. There's no problem with moving. You're not going to break anything. Um, so anyway, so we're going to get that little thing. So turn that way, Andrew. It's all mirrored on my, my camera so I can't see. So we're squeezing that together, and you're just getting a bit of massage. And so you can feel that is quite tender. Don't push too hard, but you're just trying to get a little bit of that kneading. And then if you find a spot that really is a bit tender, hold, and let's just go for another 20 seconds and hold that spot. Um, and you're just gonna let that release. And that's a trigger point release. So I'm just teaching you a little bit of how to, how to go for that and how to get some release through there. Um, and again, no dizziness, just chill out if you're getting a little bit sort of scene stars or lightheaded. Um, trigger point release, that's the stuff. Carrie, awesome. So let's go to the other side. So even yourself up. We've always got to be both sided. So I'll just get my lovely hair out of the way. Out we go, out the way there. And the same sort of thing. Find that little muscle that's going running up towards the side of the neck. And you can just tilt your head. You can see it stand out, hopefully. And that's a big, big, thick muscle. And do the same thing. So we're just going to get that. I'll show you with my fingers, that thumb to finger squeeze and get that just gently releasing in between. You can go side to side with your thumb and finger, a bit like that, and you're just getting some massage blood flow to that muscle. And the issue being, if it's over tight, I say over tight, like it's too tight, uh, then the excess tension there will create, that one doesn't attach to the larynx, but it definitely creates a degree of pressure inwards towards the larynx. Um, and that um, does restrict the ease of flow in the larynx. Um, and it's hugely related to the laryngeal motion. It actually helps you really lengthen up through, through the neck easier. And I'm not trying to grip those muscles, but we need looseness in those muscles to allow that to sort of do. So that's what we're going to test out. So hopefully you're releasing a bit more and you're finishing off with that little squeeze. It's not that like um, comfortable, is it? Um, but it's, uh, it's trigger point release. So you've done. That's the most painful bit of today. Well done. Um, okay, so now just let's do that. Let's try and sit nice and straight. I'm going to go side on and gently try and get that lengthening up through your neck, gently. So we're not trying to force or grip up through there, but you gently get that lengthening up through your neck. And hopefully you should feel that as you bobble your head a bit, you might just feel a little easier in doing that. And then go ahead. No one can hear you. Go ahead and siren. Do like a little and just work through your range and just have a little feel, just if that straight away gives some degree of, oh, that's a little easier, um, and that looseness through that upper neck, um, and, and, and possibly it really, really does relate to these tongue root muscles in through here. There's plenty more um, but that you can do to self-massage, and I might go back to that if we sort of get some time at the end um, but I want to give you some other tips, so I'm going to go with that. So that's a good way just to kind of touch base with your neck and just if you're warming up and you're feeling there's not quite loosening up as easy as, you, as it, easily as it could, just get into that, have a little feel and release, and then you can sort of afterwards feel like, okay, that's really loosened something up. Okay, I was obviously holding tension there, um, and I had to start in that process towards loosening tension. Good. So that's number. That's one area. So that perilaryngeal region we talk talk about, um, and that ease of, of laryngeal motion. And look, simply like I've just done there. Let's all do that. Let's grab your larynx. So we're going thumb and index finger, 
um, and you're getting either side of the larynx. Um, and so that's really for guys, it's that Adam's apple, that bumpy little bit of the thyroid cartilage here. Um, so it's very much a good inch or two down from your chin and you're getting down there and then you're just getting on it and just getting a little bit of motion side to side. And that can really ease tension, ease the hold that there might be around the muscles of the larynx, um, uh, raising that. Um, and uh, they can just let that muscle tension let go a little bit, just to be another cue um, of letting tension go. Good. So that's one area. Excellent. So that was just a, like a gentle move, and I would do that for about 30 seconds or something and just go about one or two seconds to one side, then the other side, and you're just getting some gentle motion side to side. Um, lovely. I mean, when I treat people, I'm pretty much getting into the deep, deep tissue release into that these muscles around the tongue root and all, all the things we hear definitely inside the mouth as well with gloves and face shields at the moment we look like you know crazy sort of martians um but um, but important right now but anyway but we're we're treating people that's that's happening um and uh we do a lot more of that mass muscle release because we, we get a big effect and a bigger effect than when you can spend five minutes and you get the larynx a lot, lot looser, um, and you can experience that feeling where it might have been tight for years, and it might have been just in this tighter state, more than normal, you functioned with your voice okay, but it gets tired quickly, um, and a whole lot of symptoms we might talk about a bit later, but um, there's a big change in that muscle tension, and for five days, seven days, two weeks maybe, there's a big change in your vocal quality and ease. Great, so the next area, ooh, Hey, hey I just thought I'd check in and to let you know this is amazing. Everybody is just taking it all in, and it's amazing. <laughs> Am so, I talking to you? There were four, did you say that there were four main areas that the four body? Yeah, yeah. Right, look, I'll move on to. I'll get on to, to neck, um, breathing, yeah. and the jaw. Good. All right, let's do it. Let's do, let, can't wait. Next, next area. Good. Lovely. So, uh, the neck. So it's a really important area. So the shoulder blade and um, your neck uh, to the upper neck. Um, it's hugely related, and if the posture or your head is placed forward because of that posture, because of pain, because of problems in that area, they'll, they'll get a, a responsive tension build up around the laryngeal muscles. So we find there's a kind of a um, mirroring thing going on through there. So we're going for that shoulder blade area. One great stretch. You can self-massage. I mean, if you've got pain, I would just say go and get treated in your local area um, and get sort of the issue going on there treated. If it's a mild thing, it could be quite important to your throat. So if you've tried everything and your voice isn't going that well, go and get it treated. Just, you know, sort out everything you can to sort of get in that journey. But something um, very, very nice for the neck. Everyone tends to stretch the neck differently and they, they find their way to ease off tension. Um, um, this sort of stretching with the, the neck where you might sort of feel tension back in that shoulder blade region back behind you there, um, often people like getting their head back and they're tilting back and across through here. I don't like it at all because it tends to uh, load up the joints in your neck um, in a bit of a way that is provocative. Um, if there's some pain where there usually is discomfort in those joints, um, it's not a great effect. Um, and a good effect afterwards, even though it feels somewhat of an ease of tension at the, at the time. So my stretch I would do is, you can do in my little jacket, otherwise I'll take it off, is you cross your arms, elbows cross each other, hands close to each other near the top through there. So you're getting that little elbows cross, hands touching. Then you're getting to the side of the shoulders, down. So not up with your ears, down, away from the hair. Good. And then your head is literally just popping forward. Okay. So now if you don't feel a little bit of a stretch there, you're trying to get that sense of, um, of your head coming down into that little tilt downwards, chin to chest and getting that length with those arms crossed. And the arms crossed wind up your shoulder blades well and draw that shoulder blade really light, nice and low down. So you hold that tension down through there um, and you hold about 40 seconds. So um, that's a really good stretch just to get that sort of stretch around the shoulder blade. Now we do both sides, so just keep on and, and do it now. So we're getting that sort of crossed arms, shoulder blades down and your head's down in the chest and the top arm, so admit for me, this one, the top elbow and arm, will generally get stretched. And if I don't feel it, I'm going to raise the elbows a little bit higher, shoulders down, 
chin in and I get a bit more stretch through the mid back and that neck area. The muscle I'm going for is the levator scapula, um, and that's a very important tight sort of muscle that tends to get in the same way over tight um, and sort of tends to run all the way up. It comes from the C2 region, C2 before, all the way down to your scapula. Um, and it tends to elevate the scapula and tends to just be this muscle that stay, stays tight and, and sticks you know, the tension around there to, to protect the region. And possibly, as we're all in COVID and working online, um, we tend to overwork that muscle a lot, either by a, a slump through your mid-back um, or head forward or we're down on our computer or the phone, you know, coming out. So all the reasons. Good. So you've done your stretch both sides, hopefully. Wonderful. And now have a feel again. Just try and get that length through your neck. <coughs> Excuse me. Morning phlegm. <clears throat> and you're getting that length through your neck and just that bobble head sort of feeling. And hopefully you can just do a little hum or siren. It might just feel there's a bit more looseness with your neck, a little bit of difference in holding that head in a better position. Uh, the key is probably then going towards notes that you struggle with or you always tend to poke with and try it. Good, so that's a stretch. Mid-back, so the thoracic area is hugely um, um, yeah, affected. The tightness in the mid-back, as in the ribs and that thoracic region, um, will affect the neck, so that's really interrelated. Um, but if it affects your breath, so the ease with how you can expand your lungs and get in your breath in, um, you tend to set up um, abdominal tension against that, or you tend to set up this um, tense, tension-based situation in your body where you're trying to fight that and you're trying to um, trying to um, work past that resistance, if you like. Because actually to breathe and to sing and really to sing and to speak all day long, to even shout a little, we don't need a lot of air. So you really need to let your air fill up. Sorry, for a long phrase, you do need a lot of air. You don't need a lot of effort is my, 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 my point. So we don't need the effort of your tummy. We don't need the effort to kind of get through the phrases, short phrases, because there's elastic recall in the lung that just lets the air flow out and we just need air flowing to make the resonance happen, the vocal folds vibrate as they need to vibrate. The effort, so this is the big point, the effort of your abdominals, the effort being um, maybe we're fighting against some thoracic tightness or we, we're sort of holding the chest high as we breathe. Um, uh, the effort um, results in more air pressure and subglottic pressure which straight away there's little nerve receptors on the subglottic region um, and they respond quickly to pressure, to the pressure of that and then quickly to a, a, a protective tension. So we need to kind of reduce that where, where possible. And it's a very in, uh, individual thing to get that perfect. Um, and there's no set way to breathe well, but definitely if your tummy activates and we get that abdominal squeeze when you sing, um, that, that's always linked to bad voicing, whatever genre you're singing, um, contemporary, opera, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so little stretch. <clears throat> I'm going to move back and hopefully you can hear me. Let me tilt you down, have a look. You're sitting down and we're just now going to tilt the side, cross your hands over your knee. So we're going opposite knee over there. And then I just want you to stretch over that way. Now I'm going to lean over to get that bend to my body. So I'm getting that stretch across, twist, and lean. And I should be getting a degree of stretch through that side. If you're not feeling a stretch, totally cool, everyone's individual, reach high and tilt over for me. So we're getting a little bit of that side stretch again through that side of my body through there, okay? So we're getting a stretch and just hold. Now hold that stretch, I'll do it, and then I want you to breathe and then, and then try and not let your neck and shoulders do the breath. Try and let your breath go to your tummy. Fill it up and fill that area that you're stretching. We'll go a little bit longer. I'm just going to hold 10 seconds more. And you're just stretching to that area. And so we're trying to get some muscle tension change. The fascia uh, connecting to those different muscles through the, the body in different slings through your body. They can become a bit more blood flow to them and ease a little bit in their muscle tension and natural tension. And so that's like another restriction that, that adds to some of this. And then good, have a little deal with that. So now, pop your hands like you've probably done before. And if Kerry's taught you, you're all over this. Um, so we're now going to breathe. And you can hopefully feel that um, expansion. 
But you might feel now the stretch side, which was this side for me, feels a little easier. Um, it might not be your main stretch, but I'm just trying to let you explore your body. Okay, so let's do the other side. Even yourself up. Very tilt, tilt over. So we're getting some side bend through the body, um, and you're getting that nice little tilt across, reaching over. Or some of you wanted to go up here and stretch across. So you're getting that stretch length through that mid back area. Um, maybe you're feeling it down to your hip and shoulder. Now, don't with any of this stretch, don't force through pain. Um, and don't uh, push us, push into this stretch here that you feel quite uncomfortable and sort of restricted and that sort of thing. Um, because often it will set up a bit more tension. So you want to get to this place that feels a comfortable stretch, um, a mild and comfortable stretch, um, because fascia and muscle tension here is not pain. We're not trying to get rid of a muscle spasm. We're just trying to increase blood flow and trying to get ease in muscle tension. Um, good. So hopefully you've got through that side too. So I think I've timed it well. So now try and get that sort of hand into your ribs area and get that, that sort of ease of, of, of breath. And hopefully by doing this stretch amongst your warm-up, um, try and see your warm-up as something that you you keep um, very physical and you see your body as the temple for the, the instrument. And it's, that is not just the instrument. The instrument and the sound is made through vibratory vocal folds, but your sort of resonant chamber, nasal chamber, um, everything is also so affected, so part of resonance. Uh, but then where, you, where your breath's coming from, your body is uh, the instrument. Uh, so warm up, and so breathing to that low thoracic area, also um, um, locally. And I said four areas, so that, that's one. And I talked a bit about breath because the abdominal was so linked. Jaw, so last little jaw release um, area. The jaw is so affected, and the jaw can really kick in when we're trying to voice well and trying to get that ease of, of, of motion. The tongue root's really affected to it all. Um, so what I could probably say with the door, have a little feel how it's moving. So just now, practically, if you can move it side to side, and you're just getting some side to side motion. And if you, you feel a lot more movement one way or the other, um, or a particular pain going one way or the other, don't force any of that. Um, it's very intricate to treat that well, um, but there's some simple ways just to reduce the tension. Um, and uh, in, in that, um, and it won't sort out all your jaw issues, but if the jaw has this process to kick in with tension and to really lend to muscle tension when you're singing, um, when you get to those parts of the phrase or those notes or the, the vowel shapes and whatever else that you kick in with that through there, you need to maybe pause and then just do some of these gentle exercises and then approach it again with a bit more awareness to say, hey, just chill out and loosen up a bit. So one exercise is really useful. Yes, Kerry? So we'll make this the final exercise before yeah. I ask you a final question, yeah. okay, oh, Andrew? Yeah. I'm just a, a bit conscious of time. This is amazing, though. Loving it. Yeah. So your audio is your audio's gone a bit unclear. Um, oh, might be. Yeah, sorry, Andrew, your audio has actually gone a little bit funny. Okay. But so, I love that exercise, by the way. I, coffee so peaks. So good. Awesome. Let's see if it's yeah. improved when I'm can, – yeah, sorry, yeah. can you say something? Is that any better now if I'm talking? Is that clearer? Hello? hello. It is clearer now. It is okay. clearer now. Yep, I might just stay cool. here. So here, <laughs> Great. So that's it, puppy cheeks, you just blow out your cheeks and it reduces tension in your jaw muscles. Um, and you hold about three seconds uh, and then you let it go. And then you go for another one. And I tend to do about a minute of that. Um, and that can just feel a bit of ease. I always then just let the tongue rest in the mouth just behind your bottom teeth um, or place it behind your top teeth. And if you place your tongue, there's a good link to your jaw muscles letting go a little bit further. And then you go for that phrase that you're just trying to challenge and feel like, oh, okay, um, that's that's feeling easier or whatever. And it might not be the solve, but it's something and points you in the direction, okay? OMG, Andrew. <laughs>
<laughs> Do you know that you have just made the day of so many people around the globe? Virgie is saying you are awesome, Andrew. Darren's um, saying that you are amazing. And actually, he's wondering whether he can book an, uh, an appointment. I'm guessing yeah. your appointments are only Melbourne-based, right? Yeah, Melbourne. I mean, you do, we, can, yeah. we can do telehealth and it actually does work to, to show people how to self-massage and whatnot. So so keep in touch. We, we, we might be able to sort something out. But, yeah, we're in Ooh, Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Good, so good. So good. So contact me, guys. If you guys really yeah. are truly interested in seeing Andrew, we'll make it happen. Um, yeah. Darren's also asking whether you can come back next week. <laughs> Veggie's saying this is excellent. Wavell is like, so did it, nurse. Yeah. Right, everyone's just really digging this. So thank you so much, Andrew. Now I have one final question for you and you well, you can answer this in a minute I'm sure you can just because you're yeah. that good <laughs> right so everything that you showed us today yeah. and Jess is saying thank you very much um everything that you showed us today would you say that it's just a part of daily vocal maintenance as well as vocal recovery like let's just say I don't know I, I you know I've, I've done eight shows a week for eight months and then I've started to lose my voice and get you know maybe even get to the point of not vocal damage, but you know what I mean, where you start to yeah. feel like you, you're yeah. losing your voice and stuff. Is all yeah. of this yeah. good for both maintaining as well as recovery? Yes. Um, these are pitched at probably just easing tension. Um, but, yeah, they're great when you go through some vocal rehab. Um, uh, really good um, opera singers I treat, um, some really good ones who are very conscientious when they've got a cold and they know that it's not wonderful, that folds aren't maybe closing well, and they can see there's some damage, which is fine, like they haven't hurt themselves, um, but they go through about two hours worth of gentle exercises, rehab vocal stuff, and they can get, sometimes not, but they can get this beautiful voice out of it. So rehab is really, really important, but I'd say it is different, and I think to approach yeah. vocal rehab and recovery is different. Um, yes. My first point in vocal rehab, do you want me to quickly go into that, or is that... Um, uh, I think we might need to invite you on the show another time, yeah. Andrew. Right. That's what right. I'm thinking because right. <laughs> I feel right. like this subject could be go on forever. Right. Um, but right. I hear what you're saying. So basically when 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 somebody gets to a point of, um, I guess, you know, on the verge of vocal damage or, or, or just very fatigued um, yeah. because of a strenuous yeah. production that they've done for a year or whatever, that it's important right. to – it's it's not just um, – it's it's kind of a combination of, you know, yeah. stuff that you yeah. just taught us so, and work yeah. with a voice physio but also right. – with a voice therapist or even a voice coach um, yeah. to do the yeah. actual exercises yeah. of vocal rehab, like straws yeah. Yeah. and, you know, yeah. and, and totally, coffee totally. cups and things like that, yeah. which I've also covered yeah. on, on this. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. sort of saying it's, it's, a, it's a coupling of all of that together yeah, for exactly. vocal recovery. And usually yeah. vocal recovery is so much quicker when you've got some manual physio uh, in, yeah. in there as well. It always yeah. responds so much quicker. Um, but yeah. yeah. A voice coach, we'll, we'll say, plug you, Kerry, is that sort of a good voice coach like Kerry um, um, and speech therapists who, speech language therapists who have that specialty with the voice, um, with voice users, um, they pick what exercises you need. So it's not just that the barrage of straw blowing and, and semi equated yeah. exercises are always going to help um, every little situation. The specific things that Kerry picks up is like, oh, you're going to need this because of this is happening in your voice. And it's just managing rest. I think that's the key thing of, you know, yes. today, of total voice rest is so important and just put put that in when, when and it can be just a day and sometimes two or whatever. It's just like so, so useful. Yay, so good. I mean, I've, we've just found everything you shared so practical, Andrew. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to give people a little bit of time to maybe type in some questions in, if, yeah. in case there is any. Um, and, and in the meantime, I'm going to tell everyone about something else that's going on, Andrew. So I'm just going to take you off for a minute, um, but we'll get you back on real soon, okay, Andrew? Um, but actually, before I do that, look at this, Andrew. Yes. Andrew, you've made her day. <laughs> Darren agrees, you've made his day. And Virgie says, please come back. Please come back. And then Bola also says, please, you know, that it's been great to have you on the show. Waverland's like, yes, one more session needed. So no pressure, Andrew. <laughs> All right, we'll have you back in a second. Okay, thank you so much. Now, guys, if you have any questions this is your chance all right final final um opportunity to ask questions uh, for, uh, for uh, from andrew right now um now while you're getting your questions ready i just want to um let you know about next week so next week's live stream is all about sing smoothly over your vocal break 
Who wouldn't love that? So make sure that you get into the links in the description box to actually join for next live stream, exactly the same time, 8 p.m. Monday EDT, which is 10 a.m. Tuesday AEST. I cannot wait to see you there next week for Sing Smoothly Over Your Vocal Break. Now, the other thing is, remember, my new program, How to Sing in Mixed Voice and Stop Cracking, Flipping and Straining, is coming soon. Sign up so that you will get access to exclusive discounts um, and free bonuses. And also, guys, Andrew's links are all below in the description box as well. So if you want to go and check out, um, you know, some of the articles that he's written and the research that he's done and just some amazing further um, learning um, from Andrew's brain, you need to go and click on the links below. And of course, all of his social links are below as well. Follow him on LinkedIn or Instagram and also where he works at Performance Medicine. Now, let's just see whether there are any questions. Let me see. Okay, yes, we do have a question. So, Andrew, welcome back. Uh, here's a question for you from Darren. What's your yeah. thoughts on a blocked nasal passage as this affects singing, my singing? Aha, uh -huh, perfect. Well, is, 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 is this a voice physio question? I don't know. Yeah, totally, totally. For this generic, like, information and advice I can kind of give you. Um, uh, so nasal passage being um, sinuses, Darren, and I'll go into sinus sort of, clearance but if it's kind of you've got another question about it you can kind of clarify while i'm talking um, but yes they're so so important because they're part of the resonant chamber um, and it just like it feels yuck doesn't it when it's kind of resonating in your head maybe even painful sometimes or whatever um, so definitely impacts um, and you'll find any sense of that the postnasal drip is really important because postnasal drip that runs back will irritate the back of the throat slightly um, and everyone's different but they would set up a protective tension in through here so if you're always running into fatigue or whatever else that's probably a big issue um, so see a good doc um, doctor to kind of get um, maybe a different way of clearing that whether it be the right spray whether it be allergic reaction or uh, pollution reaction or you know infection types of thing to clear sinuses are hard i would say a different generic colloquial word in australia um uh, but they're hard to get rid of tension <laughs> um, so sinus rinse is useful um and that's just once a day don't overdo it use cool boiled water because it's safer it's running past the blood brain barrier um so you've got to boil the water then cool it and pop it into that little funnel type sort of um, container and then you sort of put salt in it and there's solutions you get from pharmacies and then you basically squeeze it up your nose comes out the other side and it will get some of the sinus sort of um, contents out not all of it unfortunately um, steaming's awesome um, mm -hmm. and then just you know use your shower time to kind of blow the nose you know just get get movement happening in through there um, uh, is some of the things through there but I think if you always suffer with it see a doctor just try something different different spray different combination of things um, yeah Fantastic. We've got two more questions. So we've only got, um, do you have time, Andrew? If you yeah, don't, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. I was both yeah all right. Two, yeah. More, two more questions. So uh, one is from Waverlyn. While I was holding the midsection of the throat, it seems like I have a few knots. Will tender massages be fine? Um, so the midsection of your throat, is this Waverlyn when we were sort of doing that sort of stuff? Um, basically, there aren't a lot of muscles just where you're pressing. Um, there are muscles attaching to the, to the larynx, but the, the muscle bellies are a bit higher. Um, and you really probably need uh, myself or someone specialised to have a feel what where the knots are. Um, so I think if you felt knotty when you were sort of grabbing here, maybe you were talking about this one. Um, if you felt knotty here, it could be the glands and the glands being a bit swollen or quite tender and don't force that. Don't self-massage down here a lot. Um, but if you were talking these top spots that I first showed, showed you the massage, um, that way is fine to massage, um, but don't do it five times a day. Um, and they're usually tender. So don't worry if you're tender and sore there. Um, and just reducing tension through a quick release, like I did, is really useful and usually feels loosening off it. If it doesn't, you're not hitting the right spot or you just need some guidance. So you just get you know, a local massage therapist who might get up there and be able to show you how to get up there safely uh, to guide you a bit. Um, but it tells me that there's probably more neck issues going on or something else you need to address, um, and that'd be really useful for you, yeah. 
Thank you so much, Andrew. And then one more question. Um, now, this is probably a big question, but we'll see how we go. Cool. Anne-Marie Myers says, I damaged my voice a few months ago and haven't been to see the ENT yet. My mid-range tremors with little control and my upper range is soft now with no power. So yeah. my question is, is there a way to tell if it's a muscle issue versus yeah. actual damage to the vocal cords? Well, okay. big question. Absolutely. Um, so probably big, I'll get there quickly and then you can cut me off when I'm talking too much. Keep carry. Um, yep. So probably biggest way to say if there was initial pain um, and a big loss of voice initially, um, I would question if there's more pathology going on. Uh, but don't worry about the N word. So the nodule word. So everyone freaks out like, have I got nodules? What's going on? There's a number of pathology type issues that can go on with the folds and a lot of them get better. And actually just quickly nodules get better without surgery and they get better with the right rest and physio and mostly speech therapy and then the right vocal coach and that just leading back well so um i think that um if you're close to a vocal therapist that you can get some sort of work on it through there it's maybe useful to get a session and see what change brings but given uh so some of your symptoms are what i treat and see a lot of change in people um, but I'd say if you said you went through some sort of injury um, with your throat. I can't remember the side of the question. Tell me, boys. Um, yeah, if there was a damage section or a sense where you overdid it um, and there was like months of, of it being in this sort of place, I would probably get it scoped. Um, and, and it's better to have the strobe okay. scope to really see it better what's going on. Um, and then you just know what you're playing with. Otherwise, you're sort of somewhat clinically guessing, guessing oh, well, this is changing, that's changing, okay, and you just you don't know the the easy way to go forward in front of you. So I would Thank say you so much, Andrew. Um again, everyone, I just remind you that all of Andrew's links are in the description box below. So if you do want to reach out to him, you know, if you're in based in Melbourne and you want an appointment or maybe you're overseas and you want to explore online options of appointment, go ahead and, and contact Andrew um directly all below. Um, and of course, if you want to also check more of what I do, um, do make sure you check, check out the songbirdtree.com. Well, Andrew, it has been just mind-blowingly informative and fun and engaging and just so useful, so useful and practical. Thank you so much for taking the time to share with us this morning. Um, just been amazing and I hope that you've had fun too. Oh, totally. Always. So fun. <laughs> Yay. People are Yay. thanking you. They're agreeing with me. Wavelet's yeah. thanking you as well. All right, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much again. It's been the most amazing session. Have an amazing day. Know that we are both always believing in you. So yeah. why don't we get grounded, take flight and sing. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>